So we'd like to welcome you to Shia Racon Consulting Educator Instructor Training. And this is really a new module that I'm working on. Did I say module? Yeah, module. And, and really what I wanted to do is to be able to go over some specific topics in regards to being a great educator, being a great instructor, but I didn't want it to be something where it was super structured. It's more so about just having some conversations in regards to if you're getting into the education field, um, you know, you'll be able to have some different resources and just some conversation in terms of being able to be a great educator. Now, for those of you who don't know, my name is Dan Brown. I'm a licensed barber instructor. I was uh, recently just named Teacher of the Year at Atlanta Technical College. Uh, I've been able to be published as an author. You can go ahead and check out my book, Journey to State Board, uh, which is uh, live on Amazon stores right now. You can also check out, check out our website, shearwacomb.org. We also have the app, Master Barber State Board Prep. And really what we focus on is being able to help to be able to just consult for the industry. So the company is Shear Overcomb Consulting. Now in the background, uh, you see the letters. It's SOC LLC. LLC. Uh, that stands for Shear Overcomb Consulting. We just consult for the bar barber and beauty industry, primarily in the Atlanta, Georgia area, but we're really statewide. Um, we've also been able to help people migrate to Georgia, get jobs, get licensed, et cetera. What our focus has been on primarily is on state board prep, uh, which basically means that for those who either went to a school where they weren't prepared or you have an apprentice who was never really taught how to pass the exam, what we do is we do uh, online classes, we do face-to-face -face classes, we do different things to be able to help to prepare them to pass their tests on the first try. So that's one entity when it comes to state board prep. A second part of it is just different uh, resources, whether it's our books, our online teaching courses uh, for advanced hair coloring, hair cutting, just different classes like that. And we also have the consulting part where we do educator training, we do instructor training, and we also do consulting and shop analysis for people that have bar shops or salons and they'd like to take it to another level. So those are really the three different parts. The students that are in school and getting into the industry, and we have our other resources uh, in terms of the books and, the, and uh, the podcast and so many other different parts to it. And then we have the more advanced training uh, when it comes to shop owners and instructor training. So this is where what we're looking at right now, what we're doing now kind of falls in that category. Uh, because if you are a licensed barber and you're thinking about becoming an educator, there's just different aspects to it that you really want to focus on. So that's really what we're doing today. And we're starting this, as I said, to more so be a conversation and not something that's supposed to be super structured. So that's why I'm in my office, which my wife, Danielle, who's a licensed cosmetologist, uh, she's been an educator as well for years in the industry. Uh, she actually painted it for me, designed it for me. And once COVID hit, that really threw everybody for a loop. So I appreciate Danielle doing that for me. So today we're gonna look at some specifics. Well, and I'm gonna give you five points. Now, when it comes to becoming an educator, you have the different qualities, the roles, and the characteristics that you want to have. What are the qualities, the roles, and the characteristics that you want to have as an educator? Now, because, like I said, we're doing this to be able to really have it very informal in a sense, I'm actually make sure that I post this. You know, I got because right now you can't, you got to make sure that you're versatile. So, when it comes to what we're talking about today, just to reiterate, it's gonna be what are the qualities, what are the roles and the characteristics of a great educator? That's what our focus will be on for today. And we're gonna talk about five specific points. Now, one of the things that I'll tell you is that you always have to make sure that you are in the pursuit of knowledge. That should never stop, no matter what you're doing, no matter how long you've been in this industry. If you are stopping your learning curve, you're really just stopping your growth. And that just shouldn't happen. Uh, if you're in a situation where you feel like you don't have anything else that you need to learn, that's a problem. And, and honestly, I just did that for my Instagram page. That's why I repeated it. Like I said, we're doing this informally. But there's five points to this. <clears throat> First and foremost, as I mentioned, there should always be a pursuit. You should always be striving to be able to gain more knowledge. So what are the five points that we're going to look at today? The first one is professionalism. As an educator, when, when it comes to your classroom, when it comes to how you carry yourself, when it comes to you being on time, when it comes to just those basic principles, do you exhibit professionalism in what you do? 
Now, the reason that this is so important is because, you know, in the barber and beauty industry, there's a whole lot of people that can do it, even all over haircut. There's a whole lot of people that can do a design, a fade, et cetera. But what will always set people apart in our industry is not just the skills, but also, or almost really more importantly, just how professional you are. Do you show up? Are you on time? Is your business together? Is it organized? If you're able to do that, then that's a big piece in terms of being able to be a good educator because you're able to instill that into your students. So that's point number one, professionalism. The second point, dependability. We kind of just touched on this, showing up on time, making sure that you actually are there for your lessons, making sure that you're there for class on time. If you're gonna be doing a remote class on, uh, online, if you're setting a standard to say that the class is gonna start um, at a certain specific time, are you there? Is it starting on time? Are you respecting other people's time? Because ultimately, if you're not dependable when it comes to being able to be there and actually show up, that's not going to work. You know, I, I think in sports, and I'm a big sports fan, in sports, there's this term where they say that you can't make the club in the tub. You can't make the club in the tub. And what that was referring to was the fact that it's impossible to make the team and have real value and be a real valuable member of a team if you're always injured, if you're never available. So in terms of being dependable, when it comes to being an educator and instructor and in our field, it's important to really just make sure that you make yourself available to actually do the teaching that you're claiming that you want to do. Our third point is patience. Now this is really twofold. You have to have patience with yourself to recognize that you don't go from being a stylist or barber you don't go from being a student to being great overnight. So you have to have patience with yourself. You have to recognize that uh, it's a process. You have to recognize that you have to be patient with yourself. And even though you want to set specific goals to make sure that you aren't, uh, you know, getting lax, ultimately you want to make sure that you are realistic when it comes to setting your short-term and your long-term goals. Okay. Now, how does that also equate to what we were referring to as students? So as an educator, you have to be patient with students. Even though you set certain guidelines and standards, there will be some that take to these very quickly and very easily. But there are some that, that, that need a little bit more patience, where you need to have a little bit more tact, a little bit more reasonableness in terms of your expectations. So it doesn't mean that you cut corner for them or allow them to be lax or allow them to you know, not, not measure up to what you're trying to get them to but you have to make sure that you are patient in many ways uh, in terms of knowing what your expectations are and allowing them to have benchmarks to success. And what that means is that you wanna set a standard and if it takes one a little bit longer to get to that standard than another, that's okay. As educators, our goal is to make sure that we can just get them to the finish line, get them their license. And that's, a, a, that's, that's why that's our third specific point. The next one is enthusiasm. Now I have a hard time with this one. Like there's some things that I am very enthusiastic about and Danielle probably won't even believe me when I'm saying this, but there's some things I'm very enthusiastic about very easily, like sports stuff. And, you know, I'm a big Michigan Wolverine fan. I'm, I'm from Boston, so I like Boston sports teams. So whenever they're in the playoffs, I get excited pretty easily. Uh, but when it comes to education, when you walk into the classroom, when you are uh, at the point where you are about to, uh, do a class, say at a trade show or a hair show, or when you're going to be doing a class online, make sure that you have something that's going to be able to pick up the pace, that's going to be able to create that vibe. Like that's the word that I use a lot, creating the vibe, creating that atmosphere to really make sure that you are showing that you're enthusiastic about what you're talking about. Because if you're monotone the, all, the, the, the whole way through, uh, if you're not showing that you're really passionate about what you're talking about, why would anybody want to listen to you? So it's pretty straightforward, right? So that's our fourth point, having enthusiasm. The last point is communication. Now, when it comes to our students, we talked about what, the, what are the qualities, what are the roles, what are the characteristics of being a great educator? Communication is extremely important. Communication with your colleagues in terms of making sure that you're on the same page in terms of what's being taught in the classroom. Communicating with your students is of the utmost importance and this is something that really used, that's really starts a lot of times as licensed barbers and licensed stylists in the salon or in the shop. Being able to communicate with your clients, 
being able to communicate with your students, it, it, a lot of those kind of really go hand in hand because whenever there's any discrepancies, whenever there's a, a time period where it seems like things might, might not be quite understood, being able to make sure that you can really break down what it is that you're trying to get across to them is what's of the utmost importance. When I was cutting hair and I was still uh, just cutting hair in a barbershop, when Dale and I owned our shop, Chris Cuts and Creations, we owned it for almost five years. And what was interesting was I remember going on vacation one day and I sent a text message to all my clients. And this is probably eight or nine years ago now. And I remember, so what I used to do was I would always keep my, my clients' names on my phone. It would say, it would, I'd classify them as C Mike. C, Tony, C, Sean. So whenever I go on my phone and put in C, all of the clients would, would line up. So I went on vacation and what I did was I sent the text message out to all of my clients saying, hey, I'm gonna be out of town. I'll be back this date or that date. And one of my clients came back, uh, told me later on when I got back to vacation that he had never had a barber send him a text message saying he was gonna be out of town, which really kind of baffled me. Now, why was that of such great importance? Well, number one, I, didn't, I wouldn't want to have a client come to the shop and I'm not there. Number one, it disappoints them and it's bad business. Number two, I may lose them. They'll get in somebody else's chair. So that customer service and that communication was something that I carry with me, not only in the shop, but into the classroom. Students will have discrepancies about assignments, about tests, and even more importantly for what we do, they'll, they'll need specific communication in terms of what to do differently on haircuts, what to do differently service-wise, how to be able to communicate with a client. And it's impossible for us to be, able to, to, to be able to articulate that and articulate what to do in different scenarios if we're not teaching that to the students on a consistent basis. So that's communication. So we talked about five points. We talked about uh, professionalism, dependability, we talk about patience, enthusiasm, and communication. Now, there's so many other different ones that we can choose, but those are five that we're going to highlight today when we're talking about what are the qualities, the roles, the characteristics of a great educator. Because as we talked about in the outset, the pursuit of knowledge, the pursuit of being able to push forward as a great educator and as a great instructor, no matter what field you're really in, these are just some of the benchmarks and some of the points that are tangible that can help us. So we appreciate you coming in today. This was just the first episode that I'm calling, I don't know, I don't know if it's an episode or a podcast. I haven't really even put a name to it yet, but just know that it's gonna be on our YouTube page, Sheer Overcome Consulting. Make sure you check out our Instagram. It's soc.danbrown. We switched it up. We're starting completely fresh. It's 2021, a new year, new beginnings. Um, so make sure you reach out to us if you have any questions. If you're an educator, um, and you just want more classes, if you're getting ready for your state board exam for you to become an instructor, we got you. If you're a student and you're going to take state board, your state board exam, you need a kit, you need mannequins, we do all that. Um, and if you want to just hear some good content, make sure you just check us out. Check out the Barbara Biz podcast. Check out our website, shirocone.org. All right. So we appreciate you stopping in today. We'll check you in the next episode. We're going to do this every single week. Make it crisp. We're out.